Father God, we thank you for this day. It's the day that you have made. And we are rejoicing and we are glad in this day. We thank you, Father, for every opportunity, Lord God, to wake up and see tender mercies. You woke us up with your tender mercies, Lord God. We have brand new mercies and some great benefits to take advantage of on this very day. So, Father, give us ears to hear and hearts to receive this amazing word that you have for us in this day and in this season and in this time. Allow us to let it go and let it flow in so many areas of our life that we may have breakthroughs and see signs, miracles, and wonders, your actual acts in the land of the living, Father. We thank you and we praise you and we honor you and we love you for your greatness, your bigness, your awesomeness. You have brought us through a magnificent season with miracles, awe, wonders, Lord God. Signs that point us back to you, that show us who you are. Thank you for your glory, your glory around us, your glory in us, your glory shown through us. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that as I share this word that you have given me, Lord God, to live life to the full, to live a big, awesome, good life. Lord God, you want us to have a good life. And so I thank you, Lord God, even for these strategies, Lord God, that we are going to implement. We're not just going to be hearers and not doers only. We're going to implement these steps and strategies for the miraculous season that you have for us now, that you have for us tomorrow. Lord God, we thank you for how you have provided. You are Jehovah Jireh. You have provided. You will always provide. And I thank you for your awesomeness, for your love, for your glory. Thank you for my family for my friends, for my loved ones, Lord God, how they're able to see another day, Lord God, how you even allow them to wake up with your tender mercies in place for them, Lord God. So Father, as we move forward and we advance in this broadcast, in this moment, Lord God, any and everything that we need to let go, any doubt that we need to let go, Father, anything, Lord God, that we have seen or that we have been exposed to or that we have experienced, Father, allow us to let it go. Any rejection, any disappointment, any hard times that we need to let go in this season, Father, Allow us to let it go in Jesus' name, Lord God, because you have somewhere for us to go, so we need to let it go. We thank you, Lord God, for the new experiences that are coming to replace those old experiences. Father, help our unbelief. Lord God, allow us to believe in your miraculous powers like we have never before believed so that we can perform acts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and so be it. Listen, I have a word. I have a word for you. It is such a good word. It is such a great word that I said, God, whatever you need to even bring me through in this season, I want to so relate with people that they hear my heart, that they hear exactly how we need to let certain things go in our life. Glory to God. So that we will be able to take hold of the promises of God. Win, winner. You are winner. I say win, winner. There is a verse in 1 John 5 and 4 that has so hoped me in every area of my life. And it literally says that we that are born of God are winners. We're overcomers. We overcome the world, even our faith, and we win. This particular scripture reference literally says that when we believe, even when you look on the verses a little bit beyond that, 
It says, if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in who he is, that he is master, he is savior, he is Lord, he is the one that made the ultimate sacrifice. He is the finisher. He is the completer. He had a complete work and he completed. He finished his work. And when he finished his work, he literally gave us a formula and said this. He said that if you believe, if I believe, and if we have faith, we win. That's victories on a whole nother level. He desires victories for us on a whole nother level and then told us and showed us how to get these victories and what will follow if we believe, if we believe, we will have victories. If we believe, come on, not only will we have victories, but he said we will perform acts. We will. He said, I got to go. So the Holy Spirit will come, right? And then he tells us, go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Speak the good news. But then he says, perform the wonders, perform the awes, perform the signs, perform the miracles. Now, let me tell you something. Signs point. So the signs will point the people back to God. The wonders will leave people in awe of the miracles. It will leave people believing and God is with you. God is for you. God knows you. That when you speak, that when you prophesy, that when you teach, that when you pray and they receive breakthroughs or you receive breakthroughs because of the ministry that flowed from you, through you, out of you, it's validation. It affirms the glory of God and the glory of God in you. Look, what if the incredible became credible? What if the impossible became possible? What if you believe? What if I believe what God told us? Because what really matters, and I've said this before as much as I have heard it, has not changed. And it is the job description of energies of the adversaries to make us weary, to wear us down, so that we give up, so that we cast away our confidence. But I'm here to tell you, don't cast away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. And see, energies, the adversaries, don't want you to push past. Mm -mm. Don't want you to rest when you need to so that you can recover, so that you can mount up on wings like eagles, so that you can run through troops and leap over walls. When we run through troops, we're literally running past and through strategies and the systems of the world and the system of the enemy. That's why we got to be fully armed. That's why we got to put on our armor. Because when we put on the full armor of God, we can literally stand against the schemes, the setup, the plans of the enemy. He's not the only one that have plans. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that Jesus, our God, our Father, the Holy Spirit, they got plans for us. Since the beginning, they had plans. When Jesus breathed the breath of life, when God, the Holy Spirit, they, they breathed the breath of life, them, they breathed the breath of life into us, we became a living, capable, able, response-able being with all ability to push through, to win, to have victory on top of victory, on top of victory, to level up in areas of our life. Shana, glory to God. And so I'm excited. 
Because we have that confidence. When we have that confidence in our God, when we have that confidence in the creator that he is the promise keeper, when we have that confidence that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus and we begin to let go of the hurts and we begin to let go of the disappointment and we begin to let go of the rejection and we begin to let go of the abuse and the hurt and the unforgiveness because see, these are all things that will chain us up, lock us down. That's why we got a 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. That's why we got to cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge. Against the knowledge of if you have faith, when you use that faith. Against the knowledge of when I opened up my mouth and I speak the word before one jot and before one tittle pass, it will all be fulfilled. Against the knowledge of God, against this word that will tell us his mercies are new every morning. He daily loads us with benefits. He literally says, if you hope in me, if your faith is in me, if you look to me and don't look to anyone else, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will believe, we will trust in the name of the Lord. What do you need to let go? <laughs> Woo, glory to God. What spirit that have tried to invade your space or your world to make you even feel like this is something that you got to live with. This is something that you got to deal with. Mm -mm. That's against the knowledge. But when you cast down imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, every thought. You renew that mind. You Romans 12 your mind. You Romans 8 your mind. What are we doing when we Romans 12 our mind? We're presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It is our reasonable service. And we will not be conformed to this world, but we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then we'll run over to Romans 8 and say, look, nothing can separate me from the love of God. No matter how deep it is, no matter how big it is, no matter how tall it is, no matter what's standing in front of us, no matter where it's death or life or anything or any creature, nothing can separate you from the plan, from the knowledge that he has given. So when we take 1 John 5 and 4, apply it, the knowledge of it, walk it out. When we walk that faith, walk out. When we fight that good fight, that good fight of faith. When we say, no, I'm not going to let go till you bless my soul. Dislocate my hip. Shana. Dis dislocate my mobility. <laughs> do what you got to do, but I'm not going to let go until all is fulfilled. What do we need to let go and let flow? Listen, so that all the promises of God that are yea and amen are fulfilled. They're going to be fulfilled in your life. They're going to be fulfilled in my life. And so I wanted to come today to share this with you because I want you to receive the strength that I had to receive myself in so many areas of my life. I want you to receive it. Because God has granted you everything that you need to mount up on wings as eagles. <laughs> to be not weary and well-doing, you will reap if you don't give up, if you don't faint. So believe. So have faith. Come through this season, this miraculous season. We have literally entered into a season where God is getting ready to show himself and perform like never before. Those acts, mm -hmm, those miracles, those signs where ears were open, where eyes could see, where limbs grew, where masses gathered, 
where people wanted to hear and see about the goodness and the greatness of God. Glory to God. Shanama. You're getting ready to see some goodness and some greatness that you haven't even seen before. That God is ready to perform. Listen, we're seeing all of these other catastrophes. We're seeing traumatic things happen all around us. I mean, hey, we came through a pandemic and we all need some deliverance. We all need to get some mental uh, ratness and, and strength and, and maybe even sit on somebody's couch. We could have been consumed, but we weren't. We were left here for a purpose and for a reason. And I thank God for the grace of God, for the mercies of God, that we were not consumed, shall not, and that we're still able to be here in the land of the living to encourage one another, to exhort one another, to say there will be victory even after this, through this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when, when pick up that first John 5 and 4 and know that you are winning, that you are overcoming, that you are coming through something. You know, I watched the ESPYs and I said, oh my God, look at all the winners. Look at all the MVP players. Look at all the victories that have been won and the people that are being acknowledged because they didn't give up through the surgeries. They didn't give up through the disappointments. They didn't give up. Oh, their team didn't win. Their, their team didn't go to the NBA or whatever. They didn't give up. They kept in their field and they kept playing the game until they won. There are some making history right now. History. And when you look at certain things, it's like it took 10 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, whether it's baseball, basketball, track, whatever. I guess when I sit there and I watch the SB Awards and I hear the different testimonies or the battles that they had to come through and win through in order to get victories, it made me say, oh my goodness. We love a winner. We love victory. We love to see people win. We love to see people push through. What about seeing you come through? Get through this season. Get through this time. Knowing that there's a victory with your name on it. There's a breakthrough with your name on it. There's a Jehovah Gamala that's willing to compensate glory to God and make sure that you yourself have your win. You yourself have your victory. Your spouse have his win. Have his victory. Your children have their wins. Have their victory. It's our season and it's our time to walk across that stage and receive in the land of the living the rewards, the promises that God has for us, has for you. You didn't come this far to only come this far. You didn't come through what you went through to give up now, to just walk away, to settle. You prayed for this. You asked God for this. You consecrated. You fasted. You did whatever you needed to do. And he answered your prayers. And he's answering your prayers. What are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with the answered prayers? Prayers, are you literally prepared to receive what you prayed for? Have you planned this out? Do you have plans for what you've literally prayed for? Have you let go of who, what, when, where, whatever you need to let go to come into your victories? Come on. You're overcoming. Overcoming overcome it so that you can let it go and win. Be that first John 5 4 winner that Jesus said if you believe if you have faith 
my goodness. Glory to God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all the winners, Lord God. I thank you for all the winners that are out there, including me, including my loved one, including my spouse, including my children, Lord God, including my ministry, my church, my partner's father, my Facebook, my IG, my Twitter, my clubhouse. God, whoever, wherever is hearing the sound of my voice, thank you for their win. I praise you for their victories, for their signs, for their miracles, for their wonders. Lord God, that you will awe them this season, that you will awe me this season. That, Lord God, they will know that it was you. Hmm. That's what miracles are. Undeniable. You know it's God. Glory to God. Whoo, Shana. So I thank you, Lord God, for the testimonies. I praise you, Lord God, for the acts. I thank you, Lord God, for the acts that even us, the people of God, will be able to perform in your name this season. Father, we will be able to lay hands and they will recover. Lord God, we will be able to cast out demons and they will be set free. Father God, we will be able to speak to places and things and finances and favors and decrees, Lord God, and watch it spring up speedily. We thank you, Lord God, for every shift, every turnaround, everything that needs to be uprooted, everything that needs to be cut, and everything that needs to be untied in your name, for your name's sake. You are our good shepherd. I thank you. That is happening right now. Shana, in Jesus' name, as we let it go, and let it flow and make sure that we are available to you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Are we saying amen? Are we saying so be it? Are we clapping our hands? Are we knowing that we are victorious? We are victorious through Christ Jesus because of who we believe. Who we believe in and what we believe. I need you to know you are who God says you are. We can do what God says we can do. We can go where God says we can go. Believe big. Hmm. I'm going to share one more thing with you. And that is this. There is a whole nother language yeah, no, that we're getting ready to move in, that we're going to be able to articulate, that we're going to be able to talk a whole nother language because of the miracles that's getting ready to be released, because of these acts that's getting ready to, to be released. Some of the conversation, some of the perceptions, some of the things that we used to talk about, we're not going to even talk about anymore because of where God has taken us. Even our language, our love language is going to even have to be different. The way we think. <laughs> like, oh yeah, we can get on a flight and we can take first class. But you're on a whole nother level when you're talking about $250,000 to go to the moon. I'm talking about a different language. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everyone that's sowing into this word. We thank you that they're sowing into the word that when they believe, acts follow. That when they believe, they can perform acts in the name of God. That when they believe, Father, signs, miracles, wonder, ah, will happen. I thank you, Lord God, for everyone that sows the seed. You said you will open up a window and pour them out a blessing. That they will not have room enough to receive. You said that when we exalt you, you will draw all men unto us. So we thank you for increased abundance, surplus, prosperity on their house now. In their health, in their wealth, in their bodies shifts, turn around that are visible, that they can see. In Jesus' name we pray. And so be it. Thank you so much. I'll see you next Sunday. This is Dr. Kim, the preacher, the practitioner, and I love you. Talk to you soon. Let